Hello, New Eden Mining Incorporated. This is Bleda Katana, and I'm going to be doing a video today that shows you a little bit of how to maneuver for security and survivability, uh, some basic tactics, techniques, and procedures for approaching your mining career in EVE, and especially as a member of New Eden Mining Incorporated and its mining fleets. So, the first thing I'm going to show you is that uh, before we even undock from the station, uh, I've got the local, local channel up uh, on the left hand side. This is going to stay there uh, on my station HUD and also on my undocked HUD. And I've got it set up a very specific way. First, you see that the member list, which you can access by clicking these little three people icon here, member list settings, is set to show a compact member list. The reason for that is that you can fit twice as many people in the same amount of space without the portraits. When I re remove the portraits, you can see that at least two people are going to fit in the same amount of space. So I can see the entire list of 48, 47 people that are in the local system, Halima at the moment, and I can see that I have five corp members in local. I can see that I don't have anybody on the list that is currently on my negative standings list, and there's nobody in the system that is suspect or criminal flagged. So that gives me a bit of an indication of what I'm getting into before I even undock. Now, I'm also going to check before I undock and make sure that I'm happy with my fittings and the contents of my ship. The fittings for this ship are set up to mine ore at the moment, uh, but I also have a fitting saved for ice. So if I was going out for ice, and the ice belt is up right now, but I don't want to show that to you at the moment, I'd go to ice, click fit, and bam, there's all my fittings changed over to mine ice. But I'm going to get ore, so I click my ore miner, the fittings are changed, now I'm going to go into my inventory and look and see what I've got in my bay. My ore hold is empty, it's ready for newfound riches. My drone bay has my five uh, medium scout drones and my five mining drones. These are useful to me. Uh, mining drones useful when I don't have threats in my area and because I'm flying a ship with a 50 cubic meter drone hold I can also carry two different wings of drones. Uh, one medium and one small. Although actually right now I see I've got <laughs> two wings of small drones here. Do I? Yeah, I sure do. Interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to look at my uh, contents of my uh, regular hold, and I have a uh, stock of mining crystals for the types of ore that I want to go after so that I'm getting the most out of my modulated strip miners. Uh, I carry at least four of each type uh, that I plan on going for. I really don't mess around with the scordite. Uh, but the Pyrex series uh, first uh, being generally the most profitable and the Plagioclase uh, being the second most profitable, sometimes nudging it out of the top spot. And Veldspar just in case I'm going out there and I find belts that are just completely sucked dry. Now the server reset was about two hours ago, uh, so the ore belts should be looking okay. But I'm happy with the contents of my ship. so. I'm happy with the contents of local. I don't see a whole lot of major threats. Let's go ahead and undock and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Now, the very first thing you'll notice when I undock is that my HUD obviously changes. And let's go over the contents of my HUD. Uh, because I have drones in my ship, you'll see in the upper left hand corner my drone window. And I have it just large enough that it can be fully expanded and still show everything. Uh, I'll only ever have five drones out at once because that's how much bandwidth I can control with this ship at a time, actually with pretty much any ship that isn't a carrier. Uh, but uh, this will allow me to see where my drones are at all times and I can expand them out when they're out to see what their health is looking like. Now before we proceed, because I'm going for ore, I want to get some bonuses. And I and other members of the Corp are trained to boost mining output. So we're going to go to the Corp and we're going to say invite somebody to form a fleet. And when I form a fleet, my fleet window will show up here in the upper left hand corner and my production will increase. Let me just uh, remove the squad boost for a second 
and you'll see that my mining modules produce 996 meters cubed per 180 seconds. Now let me turn on my boost and they're now going to produce 1076 cubic meters per 180 seconds. Uh, that's because I have mining foreman 4 trained. I'm training mining foreman 5 at the moment so that I can go ahead and uh, get into that orca and do better boosting for the corp. Uh, but uh, right now we're just working with 4 so that's the bonus we get and that's going to be useful. Um, it's also useful for the purposes of navigation. I can send warnings to the fleet like I've spotted an enemy uh, I can maneuver the fleet so I can jump all of us out of the belt at the same time if an enemy uh, presents himself and is a threat to any of our members uh, I can maneuver us from belt to belt so that we can continue to uh, move to the most profitable areas There's a lot we can do in fleet and eventually you'll want to uh, become fully uh, aware of how to operate in fleet operations. But this is a little bit more focused on the solo operations. So, going back around the HUD a little bit, I choose to have my uh, controls and indicators in the top center portion of the screen. And the reason I do is because everything that I manipulate goes on top. Uh, so, the fleet, which I can control, top left. My drones, which I can control, right next to that. <clears throat> if I was to target something, it's going to pop up right underneath my controls uh, so that it's accessible and has plenty of space to expand because I can target up to seven objects at once. Uh, I think six is the maximum for this ship, but up to seven if I'm in the right ship. And that has plenty of space for that to grow out so I can control all those targets. Then in the far right, I've got the selected item uh, and uh, my overview. Now my overview I have set up in four different tabs. Right now I'm on the navigation tab. And the navigation tab simplifies the view by removing all the clutter so that I only see things that I may want to align to or warp to. So I've got my asteroid belts, my orbital infrastructure, my stations, uh, moons, planets, the sun, uh, warp gates. Uh, those are all there. Actually, I think I've removed the moons from this overview to kind of simplify it a little bit. Uh, I also have one set up for rats. Uh, it also has navigational points uh, and containers, um, but it will show me all of the NPC threats in the area and their drones. For mining, uh, it only shows me the different types of asteroids I can hit and the containers that may be jettisoned by my fleet. And for combat, it shows me anything that can shoot at me or that I might want to shoot at. Uh, and anything I might want to navigate to in a hurry like a station. So uh, it just kind of cleans up the clutter and makes it a little easier for me to navigate. Right now we are going to go mining and we are going to actually we're going to navigate and we've got uh, the list sorted by distance so let's do by type and you see the asteroid belts all show up at the top. Now you could right click on empty space and, and navigate that way but if you're over a station or something else that kind of you know grabs your mouse uh, that can be a little inconvenient, so I frequently will use this. Now let's just start with the very first asteroid belt. We're going to warp right to zero on it. Warp drive active. I like to turn the camera to face where I'm going so that anything that might be in the belt already shows up just a little bit quicker. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the second belt so that if I get in there and it's like full of rats or pirates or it's all mined out, I can immediately go to the next so the next belt. But again, hopefully since the server reset was only two hours ago, it hopefully it still has some money to be made there. Um, as I'm warping in, I'm going to switch to my combat overlay, my combat overview, so that things that can hurt me will show up immediately. And I don't see any. Cool. Okay, and there's plenty of rocks here. Now you'll notice that I've got my uh, tactical overlay enabled and that just kind of gives me a better indication of where I'm at in relation to the money. Um, as it appears, uh, I'm going to go to my mining tab and most of these rocks are, you know, 23, 24, 25 or more uh, kilometers away. The range of my survey scanner, which is the next thing I'm going to use, is only 22 kilometers. So generally speaking, the first thing I'm going to do is pick a rock in the center of the belt and I'm going to align to it and approach. 
so that I can close the distance with what is roughly the center of the belt, and I'll improve this heading as I zoom in. So that's the other thing about having the tactical overlay. Look at how hard it is to see where the belt is accurately, and then when you pop the overlay, bam, there's everything you could possibly want to dig. All right, so as we close this distance, um, you're going to see these things start to fall off. And rather than sorting them by type, I'm going to sort them by distance now. And there's all our ore. And the farthest stuff out is going to be almost you know, 42 kilometers. Let's see where that is. See, that's way out back of the main belt. So I'm not going to worry about that. Let's see what's about 25. I bet it's the edges. Yeah, way over there on the left-hand side. Okay, what's over here on the right-hand side? That stuff's closer. Okay, so uh, to get a good read on this belt, we might want to actually pick a rock that's a little bit over to the left. And what we're doing is we're just gradually walking our way in. Now you notice in my fitting, I've got a one micronewton afterburner. Um, that serves almost no purpose whatsoever other than I just have it lying around in my inventory, looted it off of a dead rat, and it gives me an extra 100 meters per second when closing on the belt. Every little bit helps. Now, every time I come back into this belt, because hopefully I'll pull enough ore out of it that I'm going to fill my ore hold several times, I don't want to have to do this every single time, in and out and in and out, warping to the, the uh, beacon and then creeping into the belt. So as soon as possible, my goal is to find the profitable asteroids that I want to mine, position myself in a place that is secure and accessible to those asteroids, and then leave a bookmark for myself so I can warp right back to that same spot every time. Now, stuff is starting to get down under the 22 kilometer mark. And the rest of that stuff that's out in the field, out in the outfield is uh, Veldspar, which I don't care about. So now I'm going to hit my scanner, and when I hit my scanner, you can see that scanner window pop up in the lower right hand corner of my HUD, right underneath all the asteroids. And let's just close it all up real quick. And there's all the, the ore types. Now, we've got some viscous pyroxeries here. And we've got quite a lot of ore in them. That's way over there on the edge. Oh, and they're super separated from each other. Okay. Um, I'm probably not going to go for both of them at the moment. I'm going to approach this one because it's kind of over by a bunch of other stuff I want to hit. And I'm going to go ahead and target it. Okay, and I'm going to fit a Pyrox Ares mining crystal in one of my turrets, and I can go ahead and immediately start hitting that. Okay, now while I'm hitting that, I'm going to maneuver for another asteroid. Now let's see what we've got in the way of uh, solid Pyrox Ares. Okay, there's a big one away over there. Okay, we might have made a bad choice. Okay, there's one. This is definitely going to be in range. There's some big chunky ones on the other side, so we might mine out this side a little bit and then head over there. Okay. Just checking them, one down, one down the other. A lot of Pyrex areas on the other side of the belt. Okay, they're both in range. I want to make sure that I get these mining lasers up and running as quickly as possible. So, I'm hitting both those asteroids. Now, you might say, well, I'm done. I can go fix myself a drink or whatever, but not quite, okay? Uh, I've set my ship up to have a stable capacitor so that I can do this right here and turn off my afterburner because I don't need to overshoot my, my marks. Uh, and I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got an adaptive and vulnerability field. And I can run that constantly while mining and not deplete my capacitor. Uh, that uh, is not as useful right here. Um, if I'm the only guy in the belt, I'm the only target. A pirate might choose to go ahead and take me out. But if I'm... Uh, got a whole bunch of company in the belt and pirates are looking for soft easy targets usually from stealth uh, they're gonna look at my ship and they're gonna see this pretty blue glow all over it and they're gonna say mm, he's running a bit of shield tank that Mackinac next to him or that orca next to him or other juicy targets those are running no tank um, and in this system which is a 0.7 system I think they have roughly 10 seconds to kill me before the Concord police show up. Might be less. So when you're talking about seconds counting uh, before the police show up and destroy you, 
for trying to gank miners. Yay! Spaceship command level five. Nice. Um, you're gonna want to look for targets that don't tank back. So that's just one little thing. Uh, might not do much for me other than to tell a, a human player. Maybe you want to look for something a little softer. All right. Uh, let's rescan because we've maneuvered in the belt and see what else has maybe popped up that wasn't in range before. Okay, uh, let's identify our or our asteroids in the scan. So I've got one at 5,557. Uh, that is a solid Pyrex series. It's going to be in here. 5,557, so that's this guy right here. 31,225 units. Uh, might get almost a whole ore hold out of that and his friend uh, without depleting the rock. The other one's at 5,330, and it's a viscous Pyrex series. Uh, and the one that's at 5,000, that's got 17,160 units in it. So that is going to deplete before we leave this belt. And that's why we're not quite done, because we're going to look for the next rock we're going to hit. That other viscous is way out of range. But let's look at our list of solids and see what's already in range. Um, after that 5,557, the closest one is at 15 kilometers. Let's click it and see where it is. Let me zoom out. Okay, let's click that guy. Okay, he's behind me. So I can maneuver to get in range of that. Let me go ahead and uh, align to it. And as you, the reason I looked to see what I was looking at here is because this one here is at uh, 5,000 meters. I'm closing on the one that's at 15,000. Let me go ahead and lock it. Okay. Um, you know what, let me move my targeting down a little bit. Oop, stop it. Unlock. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where's the anchor? not locked. Why won't you let me move you? There we go. Move you down below that because that way the text isn't interfering with it. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we're in, in range actually already. Um, you see how we're in range of all this stuff? Let me see if I can put myself in range of a fourth item. Scan again. I'll bet you this one at 19 kilometers is going to look good. Ah, there's one with a big old chunk. Okay. And it's right there. Let's lock that guy too. Okay, and we're in range of all four, so I'm going to stop. And I'm going to bookmark this location. And then I'm going to show you something else that's kind of cool. We warped in way out here. Uh, see, I don't have the beacon on my overview. Navigation, is it on, is it on that? Yep, there. There it is. Okay, that beacon is 21 kilometers from me right now. So, uh, the majority of my uh, griefers and gankers, they're going to be using uh, weapon systems that are uh, have an optimal range of about seven to 9,000 kilometers or less. Uh, my ship has uh, field extenders uh, in the rigs these uh, medium core defense field extenders, which increase my uh, my signature radius. Here's why that's important. Uh, let's bring up my ship's information. Okay. The signature radius of my ship is 293 meters. The scan resolution of my ship is 804.54 millimeters. The greater the difference between the scan resolution of the ship doing the targeting and the signature radius of the object or ship being targeted, the longer it will take for the targeting ship to get a lock on the targeted ship. So anything that increases your signature radius makes you easier and faster to target. Uh, generally, by default, a larger ship is going to have a uh, a worse scan resolution. Therefore, it will take longer for that ship to get a lock. A battleship is going to take, uh, without any uh, modules assisting it, uh, like 20 seconds to get a lock on a frigate. Much less to get a lock on another battleship. Uh, but a frigate or a destroyer is going to get a lock very quickly 
on a exhumer or an industrial ship uh, or one of our, our barges that it wants to kill, gank. So um, I've kind of traded a bit of shield for a bit of uh, targeting resistance. Uh, however, I've positioned myself in order to overcome that uh, increased targetability by putting myself at twice the range, twice the optimal range of the average ganker's guns if they just warp to the beacon point for the belt. <laughs> Most experienced PvPers will not do that. What they'll do is they'll come into range in a cloaked ship and they'll leave a bookmark for themselves or they'll position probes around the belt so that they can get a 100% accuracy lock on your ship's location and then warp right on top of you. So that's why in my combat overview, I told you about the navigation overview, combat overview is going to show me any threats and probes. So if probes are in the area, uh, I'm going to see those on my overview. Now another tool that we can use to see if uh, we need to be worried about hostilities in the area is I watch local, which I've been doing this whole time, and I still see that there's nobody criminal flagged or suspect flagged over here, um, and nobody that has negative standing with my corporation. But I'm also going to scan for them, and just to get a bit of situational awareness on what's in the system. Now I'm going to go to my scanner button, click it, and I'm going to click on the directional scan, or D-scan. I've positioned my D-scan window right over here next to my overview window so that they're right next to each other and can be correlated very easily. I set my range up for 2 billion kilometers. Okay? 2 billion and 6 for some reason. Okay. Then I set my scan angle for 360 degrees. I can set it for 180, 90, yada, yada, yada. Okay? 360 degrees. And I click my active overview settings. It's looking for combat. Is depleted. Look at that. Well, I'm not worried about the asteroid being depleted because I already targeted another one. Boom! And we're still making money. Okay, these items that show up in the scan are all things that uh, would show up in my active overview if they were within visual range of me. Uh, but they're not. Uh, so you see I've got all these batteries and stuff like that. I'm going to click on type to sort them. And I see, excuse me, I see a skiff. I see a Minmatar shuttle. I see a couple of Mackinaws. I see a Legion. Now I can right click this and see what's a Legion. Well, there's a Legion. That's a strategic battle cruiser. A strategic cruiser, sorry. Okay, that's a bit of a threat. Who's it belong to? We don't know. It says Sierra. Is there anybody in the. Local with the name Sierra? No. But let's see if there's anybody in local that's just left their name on their ship. Mm, man, it's a lot of stuff. Might have to remove some of these things from my overview. Mm, I don't see anything. Nubaka. Who's Nubaka? Have we got anybody named Nubaka over here? No. All right. So everybody in the local is pretty smart, actually. Um, if you leave your ship called Bleda Katna's uh, Mackinac, they're going to see that anybody that does directional scan, and uh, most of the really good PVPers do. I'm not saying I'm a really good PVPer because I do it, but most good PVPers use their D-scan. Uh, in fact, most survivable players use their D-scan. Uh, if they see that on there, Blade of Katna's uh, Mackinac, they can quickly alt-tab over to a, a website um, and look me up, and they can see uh, what my most common ship fittings are, what my PvP record is, uh, how many kills I've had. Um, they can learn about my corp. Um, they can read all my kill mails. Uh, that's a whole lot of intelligence to be giving somebody before you even meet them in space. Um, and if they know more about you than you know about them, you're at a serious disadvantage because they know whether or not you're a threat and you have no idea. So the D-scan is useful and you want to avoid giving away any intelligence on it if you can. Uh, it doesn't automatically refresh. you got to keep hitting it. Um, I don't like how cluttered it is, so I'm going to go into my overview settings and I'm going to 
go to my filter and I'm going to try and remove some of this stuff that I don't want to be seeing. Uh, nothing in there that I care about. I want to keep all that deployables. Uh, keep that for now. <clears throat> don't see anything in here I want to remove. Uh, I'll remove their sentry guns. Uh, remove those orbitals. Mm, planetary interaction, ship sovereignty structures. Structures. That'll have some stuff I want to get rid of. Control towers, get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get rid of all these batteries. Just gotta love the Eve interface, don't you? I mean, just. It is designed to be unfriendly. Okay. Let's close this. Let's save that. And we're going to call that PVP. And yeah, we're going to replace that. Now let's scan again. Whoa, that's a whole lot easier to read. <laughs> okay, so I see a Vigil, a Skiff, a Retriever, a Minmatar Shuttle, two Mackinaws, a Charon, Kaldari Trading Station, uh, a Bustard, and an Amar Shuttle. Pretty non-threatening looking crowd. So, where are we at on our ore hold? Bring up our ore hold, and you'll notice my assets show up in the lower portion of the screen. Go to my ore hold, and we're a little less than halfway full. And let's look at our people and places because now we're in position to save a bookmark. So I'm going to save this location. Oh, yeah, I got to go to my personal locations. Where did you go? People and places. There it is. Okay, I'm going to add this location. And I'm going to call it uh, Halima 8, Asteroid Belt 1. Okay, now I can warp to zero and end up right back here the next time I come back to this belt where I am already in range of the things I want to be mining and I'm already in position to protect myself from threats that enter the area. Okay, the one thing that I didn't do, which I would have normally done the very first thing when I get here, put my drones out. Okay, now there's no threats in the area right now, so in my exhumer, I've got space to put out miners and go ahead and have them help me. And you want to have your miners go after something that is as close as possible so they don't lose travel time. Okay, now here's my drones up here. And I'm going to tell them to mine repeatedly on the target that I've just clicked, which is the one that's at 3,900 kilometers. Or meters. Thank goodness it's not that far away. And they're going to go out there and uh, dig me some dala. But if I see a bad guy coming, the nice thing about being in an exhumer instead of a barge is that I have space in my drone hold for an entire wing of miners and an entire wing of light scouts. So I would quickly grab them, tell them to return to my drone bay, uh, don't uh, abandon them. Uh, and then as soon as they have returned, I would launch my, uh, my, my attack squadron, my, my light scout drones. Uh, and probably what I would do is I would uh, immediately begin trying to target the closest threat. Because sometimes your light scout drones will not automatically engage, even though you've done everything right and told them that you want them to be aggressive and focus their fire. They just won't for some reason. So I uh, actively target the first threat, first and closest threat, and manually tell the drones to engage that threat. Because once they have engaged the first threat, they will continue, continue to engage all other threats until they are removed from your area. And then they'll return in orbit. So, uh, in a nutshell, that is the, uh, the pointers I have for you on uh, how to safely approach a belt and how to position yourself for maximum profitability. A few other pointers, things you might consider, although it requires a lot more micromanagement, is uh, you can uh, pick an object and orbit it uh, to keep yourself in motion. I recommend picking something that's not being mined by yourself or anyone else. Because if you're mining an or if you're orbiting an object, and it despawns, 
uh, your ship will then continue on a straight trajectory in whatever direction it was pointed at maximum uh, impulse speed and uh, you'll fly off into space. You'll fly out of range of whatever you're mining, you'll lose the yield for that cycle, uh, and you'll have to then fly yourself back into the belt. So if you are not paying very close attention to what's happening and your orbit target despawns, you, uh, you're going to lose a lot of time. And in this game, nothing else matters but time. You lose a ship, it's just pixels. You lose a bunch of ISK, it's not real money anyway. Although it's closer to real money than a lot of other games I've played. But your time is the biggest thing. Time spent training skills, time spent harvesting materials, time spent learning by doing and failing. These are all irreplaceable uh, commodities. <clears throat> so when, in, uh, or when possible, avoid wasting your time. Uh, and then one last thing that you haven't seen me do yet, which I will do right now, is I'm going to align to the station I want to leave here for. Now you got to be careful because I've positioned myself, sometimes I will position myself where I have less than 50 meters of wiggle room uh, that I can wander away from something before it goes out of range. So uh, I will click align and then I will look at my ship and make sure that it's actually pointed at where I'm going and then I will immediately stop my engines. Because if you just click align it will go at maximum speed towards that object and you will again fly off out of your asteroid belt. So, the asteroid is depleted. but that doesn't matter because I have another one targeted. Ta -da. Now I have no extra targets so let's do another scan, see what's in range. That guy's already targeted. That guy's not targeted. Let's target that guy. Okay, now I have another target to bounce to when my uh, asteroid is depleted. Okay, so I hope this was informative for you. Uh, we'll be doing some more videos later about uh, patrolling techniques, uh, using the market, um, and if there's anything that you'd like to see or like to ask about, uh, please leave a comment, and I'll do my best to either answer your comment or post a new video that uh, illustrates the question that you're asking. So thanks a lot for your time and fly safe.